Hey, Jim Hoffman here from Email 12 Hours. These are your Monday Minutes. Guys, thanks for joining me for another episode here. And, of course, we're moving on with some trauma stuff. And today we're going to go briefly into the head and spinal trauma section and cover a little bit about facial injuries. And next time we're going to get a little bit more into it, talk about eye, ear, dental trauma. But today I want to kind of just focus a little bit on the facial injuries. And guys, listen, if you like this stuff and you find this is helping you, go sign up for a free membership at TurboMedic. Okay, it's an insider membership. You can just go to umssto.com forward slash insider, sign up, get access to lots of more digital content, videos, audios, practice exams, all sitting there waiting for you. So go get that stuff if you find these videos useful. Now, of course, I always like to start these out by saying why this stuff is important because it's not just for exams. Yes, this is key content that will help you pass exams. But it's also designed to build your knowledge base, to have you go and research stuff and to look further into topics that you're maybe not that uh, comfortable with, okay? And this is going to help you make better clinical decisions. It's going to help you write better reports. It's going to make, make you interact more effectively with other healthcare providers. It all ties in. So while this stuff might seem basic, okay, it is all kind of interconnected so that you can be a better EMS professional. So let's talk about the uh, head injuries. Okay, now listen, they kill about 50,000 people a year. Head, face, and spinal injuries are all kind of closely related. We talk about maxillofacial injuries. We have to be careful with those guys because this is where you can get that compromised airway due to significant bleeding, swelling, all right, and that can be your biggest threat when handling these types of injuries. And then when we have closed injuries to the head, you have to keep in mind that cervical spine injury and brain injury is also something you need to be concerned about and you need to manage, okay, and rule out. Now, I put some of the fort fractures here just to uh, uh, mention it because these are part of the facial fractures. And we have the fort, you might hear this a lot, the fort one, the fort two. And one is where you've got a fracture to the maxillary bone, nasal fossa bones, okay? A uh, fort two is that pyramid of the nasal bone. If you picture the skull and the nasal bones of the skull, that little kind of pyramid that's there, that'll be your, your the fort two when that's fractured along with the medial orbit, right? The eyes as well. But now the Ford 3 is something that we see a lot, and you hear, might hear this talked about a lot in school, is where you've got that floating face, where you've got the bones are broken in a way where then nothing is really con it's nothing's connected. So that bone is just sort of floating under the skin. And if you ever have a patient like this, and you see that, you'll never forget it. You will realize what they mean when I say floating face. Okay? Um, when we talk about other issues when it comes to uh, facial fractures, it's important to kind of realize and to note that the nasal bones are actually the ones that get fractured the most. So when you've got a potential for a nasal bone to be fractured, don't put nasal airways in. Don't use nasal gastric tubes. Don't try to do nasal intubation. Of course, whatever your protocols are, whatever your guidelines are, that's what you're going to follow. But don't go doing this for patients that have nasal fractures, okay? And always keep in mind, guys, that patients that might have a facial fracture or a basal skull fracture, you do not want to be sticking things in their nose. You don't know where it's going to end up because you can't see. You don't have an x-ray machine, and you don't know where that tube is going to end up. Okay, the last thing to mention, guys, on facial fractures today is something called blowout fractures. This is where you get that recessed um, globe, impaired movement. A uh, patient can be have double vision, edema, ecchymosis, or epistaxis going on. Okay, um, so this is all kind of stuff you have to kind of watch out for. When you talk about patients that might have a blowout fracture. Now, some of the things to just note when you're managing these types of patients 
you know, you want to do your spinal recursions, you want to do your airway management, assessing the airway repeatedly, using suction to keep it clear. You want to make sure you got that airway, you know, secured, okay? Adequate ventilation. Some of these patients with, with the head injuries, they might not be able to breathe on their own or having difficulty taking in enough air. You might end up having to ventilate for them using a BVM. Okay, and every patient's different. Some patients, if they have something like a Lafort, it might be a little difficult to get a good seal because you've got broken bones there, right? So just keep in mind about the airway and assessing the airway, managing it, using oxygen ventilation, all right, all kind of tying it together, and of course, tailoring what you can do, what you can't do based on your guidelines and based on the individual patient and their injuries. Okay, um, circulation, of course, you want to control the bleeding, right? Head injuries, you want to control that bleeding. Care for the wounds and look out for avulsions. Care for the avulsions as needed, okay? So, guys, again, this is a quick episode today because I wanted to kind of just break into it a little bit and next time be a little bit longer because we're going to talk more about the eye, ear, and dental trauma, okay? Um, and some of the things that go along with that and how you can manage it and what to look out for. Okay, but again, guys, if you like this stuff, go check out TerraMedic. Become an insider member. It's free, gigabytes of digital content, hours of audio and video, practice exams. Just go to emssco.com forward slash insider and take advantage of that membership while it's still open. All right, guys, I hope that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please engage with me. Check me out over on Facebook. I'm at the EMS Professional there. You can get me on Twitter and Instagram. My my uh, username there is at EMS Safe. I'd love to engage with you on all those platforms. Guys, if you have some minutes of your own, be sure to send them over to me. My email is contact at emsofficehours.com, and I can maybe create a Monday Minutes based on something that you're passionate about or something that you want more clarification on when it comes to your daily EMS Adventures. So go check that out. And be sure to go to the website at emsofficehours.com. Check out the past episodes, other the, the podcast there as well, and other postings there. So guys, that's it for me. As always, I am Jim Hoffman from EMS Office Hours in the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.